In this video, we're going to take a look at the Oracle database architecture. And um, our, the word architecture scares a lot of people off. They don't know, exactly know what it means. And all it really means in, in this context is if you're going to be an Oracle database administrator or work with the Oracle database in, in any way, shape, or form, you really should understand how all of the pieces kind of work together so that you can use it as efficiently as possible. Uh, the Oracle database has been around for a long time, and one of the reasons it's survived as long as it has is the fact that the way it was designed really gives Oracle a lot of flexibility and gives people who use the Oracle software a lot of flexibility as to how they're going to optimize their system as much as possible. Uh, databases today are bigger and bigger. People are demanding greater and greater performance that goes along with these databases. Uh, you know, hardware is trying to keep up. And really the amazing thing that Oracle has been able to, to survive as long as it has in the database and the technology world is really the design of the Oracle databases is pretty phenomenal in that it really gives you a lot of flexibility as to how you want to set up your system so that you can optimize it as much as possible. But certainly optimizing your Oracle database requires you to kind of understand the basics of how the architecture is set up. So let's start with uh, some basic fundamentals. There's two places that you can store stuff inside of uh, any computer, right? There's memory and there's disk. And each one of these has pros and cons that are associated with each one, right? What's the biggest pro that goes along with memory? Well, it's fast. It's the fastest way of getting information in and out of your system. What's the biggest con of memory? Well, the money. It's very expensive. Uh, I just saw an ad the other day, which absolutely blew my mind, to get a one terabyte disk at a local computer place uh, here in Colorado. They're selling one terabyte disks for $30, $29.99 for a terabyte disk. I can literally fill up my car, and it'll cost me more money for gasoline to fill up my car than to get a terabyte of storage. And to you know, give you an example, of what that's like, you know, 30 bucks can get basically get me one terabyte of disk, which is the equivalent of, you know, 1,024 gigabytes. For 30 dollars, how much memory could I get for that same amount? Well, let me do memory. I could probably get about four gigs of memory for that same 30 dollars. So disks are, you know, much cheaper than storing information. Memory definitely has the limitation of being a lot more expensive. So what's the, the pro for disk? Well, obviously the money. It's going to be a lot cheaper to store uh, information on disk than it is going to be in memory. And of course, the biggest con that goes along with that is that it's slow. So we got to figure out a way to optimize our systems. Whoops. Still getting used to this this new guy here. This new tablet I bought the other day. Why is that scrolling? I don't want you to scroll. All right, there you go. Ah, I'm holding the button down. That's why. So, that's the biggest limitation uh, that we have with memory and disk and the pros and cons that go along with each one. So our software has to be sophisticated enough that we want to optimize it as much as possible. We want to use both memory and disk in a very efficient way so that we can get the most out of our system. So let me go through and I'm going to clear this guy. So how is Oracle set up? Well, we know we got memory and we have disk. Not sure how to represent memory inside of a computer. I guess I'll just draw it like little chips that go on here. So we want to optimize things as much as possible. So we want to set up our architecture where obviously we do what? We want to do as much stuff in memory as we possibly can. So we want to have a lot of activity here. minimal activity here. There's a third step that goes along with understanding the architecture and those are what are called processes. And Oracle maintains all of these processes that run on your system. And the processes make sure 
that what's going on in memory, what's going on in disk, um, stay in sync. This is a pretty complex thing. I mean, when you think of a traditional computer program, what do you do? You start up something like Excel or Word or whatever, or whatever program you're talking about. It loads into memory, you do your work, you save things, you exit the program. Oracle is a lot more sophisticated. There's constantly things that are going on inside the database, especially if we're talking about a transactional system. OLTP stands for Online Transactional Processing. If that's our type of database, there's going to be a lot of activity going on where people are inserting records or updating records. We want to minimize what's going on here. If we have to go out to disk every time we try to find something or when we have to write or update a record, it's going to be a tremendous uh, burden on the system and it's going to slow everything down. In a best case scenario, we would keep our entire database inside of memory, but obviously with databases getting bigger and bigger, we can't really do that. Uh, it would be great if we could where everything happens in memory, and the only time we went out to disk was when we were going to shut down the system. That would be a great way to do it, but obviously that's just not feasible. So Oracle has all of these different pieces that allow us to go through and um, optimize the different system, and if you're going to be a DBA, you really have to understand how all of those different pieces work. So we're going to talk about a little bit about each one right now, and we're going to go into greater detail in other videos. So what's going on in memory? Well, inside of memory, when the Oracle database starts, there's a big piece of memory that it grabs. I gotta stop hitting that stupid button. There's a big piece of memory that it grabs, and this piece of memory is called the SGA. SGA stands for the System Global Area, and it's an area where Oracle is going to try to do as much work as it possibly can, right? Because memory we know is fast. We don't have a lot of it, but we know that it's really fast, so we're going to try to do as many things in here as we possibly can. Obviously, every now and then, one of the processes is going to have to wake up, and it's going to have to do what? It's going to have to take anything that's been changed in memory and write it out to our disk. But we want to do this as efficiently as we possibly can. So the process isn't going to do this every single time we make a change. Every time we do an insert or an update or anything like that, it's going to try and batch all of these things together. And occasionally it's going to wake up and say, all right, what do I need to write out to disk? OK, boom, I'll write it out to disk. Grab it all together, boom, write it out to disk. It's going to, again, try to do as much stuff inside the SGA as we possibly can. And we're going to look at what we can do as a DBA to make sure that we um, have the SGA set up properly so Oracle can do most of its work up here. Obviously, we want to make sure that our disks are tuned also. We have to make sure that everything is set up inside of our disks properly so Oracle isn't doing a lot of work here. We want to make this as efficient as possible. And we also want to make sure that the processes are working between the SGA and the disk. We want to make sure that those are tuned efficiently. So this video is really just to provide an, over, uh, an overarching view of all of the different pieces that are out there. We're going to have other videos that specifically deal with the SGA, how to set it up, how to tune it, how to look at it, stuff to do with the disk, and stuff to do with the processes.